It's often not until we see the face of a person whose life has been saved that we can fully understand the tremendous difference the actions of one person can make. We begin in the summer of 1995 in Los Angeles, California. 56-year-old Kitty Lee was losing her battle with kidney disease as she waited for a donor organ that might save her life. She had the kidney failure about eight years ago. I watched my mom change from a real vibrant, active person to someone that just came to a stop. She'd be okay for about a half a day and then be sick again because the poisons would build up in her system. On the morning of June 24th, 1995, at the UCLA Transplant Center, Transplant. Jenny Merrick received a call that there was a kidney available for Kitty. Oh, that's great. You have we had such a great match, and it was such a good organ. However, almost equally as important is how quickly you can get that organ transplanted. It's uh, now 10 o'clock, and as soon as you get the message, please call me back. Thank you. She wasn't at home but she had two cellular numbers. We learned very quickly that we weren't going to reach her that way. I noticed then, as part of her phone numbers that were available, there were many that were out of the local calling area, and it looked like it was an itinerary. More than 400 miles away, Kitty had been visiting her close friend, Lisa Martin, where her fiancé, John, picked her up. Hello. Yes, it is. This when is the phone American call came back, they couldn't get a hold of Kitty. I thought, this is really strange. She never goes any place without her phone because she was always waiting for the, uh, the donor call. It's a wonderful match for her. She's telling me we have to have her in L.A. by 6 o'clock. We absolutely must find her. But she's not here at the moment. She's going on vacation. Now I'm starting to sweat. Kitty and John were going to do the hand-in-hand -hand bit and play tourists, ride the cable cars, walk all around San Francisco. I had no idea what to do. San Francisco Police, Dispatch 88. Hi, I need your help. I have a friend who is playing tourists down on your pier today, and she is a good kidney transplant recipient. The hospital in Los Angeles is trying everything to get a hold of her do you know where pier she's going to? I think she was going to go down to the Pier 39 area. San Francisco police dispatcher Carol Bernard was handling the call. We have a radio code 1036, which is emergency notification, but we don't send people out for that kind of an ambiguous range. They're flying the kidney in as we speak. Uh, uh, so is that correct? She's on the waiting list? Yes. And they found one. Yes, and she needs to be in Los Angeles by 6.30 tonight. The first thing I did was look at the clock, and it said 1.30. Oh, boy. I know, I know. I've been trying for the last hour to track her down. Do you know what she's wearing? Yeah, I do. Okay. But the fact that it meant someone's life made me send it up, even though that is like telling somebody, do this impossible thing. Information for central units to be on the lookout of a medical patient, possibly in the area of Pier 39. San Francisco police officer Neil Griffin was on routine patrol in the central district. Neil had a cousin who had died of liver failure. I knew the enormity of the whole donor situation. I knew the time frame. It's also described as having a short curly blonde hair, possible sunglasses. We had no pictures to work on. All we had was a partial description. To be quite honest with you, I, I didn't think uh, there was really a chance to even find her. But I thought I had to give it a shot. She's wearing a light blue blouse, white pants, in the company with her fiancé. We're driving a Ford F-150 pickup, black and color king cap. Hi, yeah, my name's Rick Lee. I'm looking for Kitty Lee. From Los Angeles, yeah, Rick and Michael Lee were here. also trying to locate their mother by phone. So can you have your security people look for her? It was like 2.30. So I was frustrated. You know, and we're, looking, we're watching the clock tick away. I'll get back to you if I hear anything, I swear. She's a very caring mom. Just a great lady and very giving. We both have problems, you know. After I had my accident, when we would both get sick and tired of being where we were, we'd be together and we would kid about it. 
I got real teary-eyed and upset because it was like someone saying, you know, okay, you can walk again to me and, and me missing out on that opportunity. It happened to be the UN 50 celebration with all the other commotion that's going on. The loudspeakers weren't quite audible enough. So I started walking through all the restaurants, thinking they might be sitting down and having something to eat. But still no luck. It's really a needle in the haystack. When we continue. And the last time I spoke with the hospital, and they said, we're getting down to the wire. It's really an emotional time. That's my friend. Goodbye.